You are listening to The Michael Lodge Show. Wealth, business, and taxes. Oh, yeah, and some politics. Let's get started. And good morning. This is Mike Lodge. I'm glad that you've joined me. You know what? I forgot to get my cup of coffee. Shoot, I came into the studio and forgot my coffee. What is happening to me? I tell you, I'm losing it. My goal is always to make a cup of coffee in the morning, but this morning I forgot because I was so busy with other things. And there's a lot of things on my plate, well, not on my plate, but on my desk that I need to accomplish today. And so I forgot my coffee. And I think I just broke a golden rule. I don't know. Last night I sat down. I heard that Nancy Pelosi wasn't going to read the read the names of the individuals who were gunned down by the Taliban or or exploded a bomb had exploded and killed these 13 soldiers in Afghanistan and she refuses to read their names on the floor of the congress 13 individuals who gave their lives for this nation and also for the Afghan people. But I find it strange so many different times when we have the death of soldiers become political. Now, Nancy Pelosi seems to have this habit of making things political. She she seems to be very good at it. She is really good when it comes to making people angry because everything around her is political. If she doesn't like anybody, and she hates Congressman McCarthy of California, she hates him, just hates him more than anything. So anything that he says and any request that he makes in Congress, and he wanted the names read in Congress, she says no, because it's politics. It has nothing to do with anything else except politics. So yesterday, last night, about 8 p.m. last night, I sat down and I sent a letter to my member of Congress. And I said, and her name is Frankel, Lois Frankel, member of Congress from Washington, D.C. And so I said, Dear Congresswoman Frankel, I wish to have this letter placed in the congressional record that I, Michael Lodge, an American, wish to remember and state the names of the servicemen and women who gave their lives for our nation. These soldiers are the best of the world, but led by a commander-in-chief that failed them. As an American, I am proud of their service and love of country. Please read aloud and place in the Congressional Record these names. Mainly because I wrote this letter because I think it's a disgrace not to mention their names. David Espinoza, age 20. Nicole Gee, age 23. Darren Hoover, age 32. Ryan Noss, age 23. Hunter Lopez, age 22. Riley J. McCollum, age 20. Dylan R. Marola, age 20. Kareem Nicao. Johnny Rosario Picardo, age 25. You wonder why these names can't be read. Humberto S. Sanchez, Jared M. Schmitz, Maxton Sovic, Dagan Page, ages 22, 20, 22, and 23. All of these individuals, very young people. A lot of them from California. You, you would be surprised at how many are from California. 
but they were from all over the United States, from the from Nebraska, from Ohio, from all places, Indiana. I mean, they're from the United States. These individuals were born here. They lived here. They gave their life in a foreign country to protect us here in the United, United States. So I wrote this letter to my member of Congress. And I want it to be read into the congressional record. Even if my if these names of, on my letter are placed in the congressional record, at least we have their names recorded in Congress. I think it's very sad. Now, my issue with my congresswoman is that she is Democrat, and she probably will not submit my letter, and she probably will not read their names. But I tried. Just as these Americans tried, so did I. I tried to get their names in Congress also. I got a form letter. I sent both a uh, fax. I faxed my letter to her office. And I also emailed uh, the, the letter to her office in Washington, D.C. I got a form letter back of how she's working for the American people and how she's concerned, how she's worried about the the uh, uh, the abortion law that went in Texas. I mean, a whole bunch of stuff that had nothing to do with these military individuals who died for us, for her freedom. Politics should never be in the military. And the problem at the moment is that Washington, D.C. is so politically corrupt, so in, so destructive to, the, to how America used to be, of how we were proud of every single member that served in the armed forces. And as an American, and if you're in the armed forces, and if you're listening to me, I love you people. I support you people. Unfortunately, at the moment, you're led by the wrong commander-in-chief. Commander-in-chief that doesn't even know who you guys are. Who doesn't even know where he is at. But I love you guys. I, I am so proud of every single one of you. I remember the first time I met a military individual. I used to be... When I was a kid, I was growing up in Seattle, Washington. And I was a member of a marching um, group. And we had uniforms, and and we marched, and we did all different types of exercises and everything else, but we marched. It was Seafair. And if you know anything about Seattle, they had this Seafair. And I remember as a kid... We would go down to the waterfront and these pirates would come on board and they would take over the land of Seattle. And then that was the beginning of the seafair. And they had parades and they had fireworks. They had all kinds of things. It was a tradition in Seattle and I loved it. I miss Seattle. So it was seafair. And they always had a parade in downtown Seattle. And we were marching in that parade. And the float that was behind us were three soldiers. In fact, they had just arrived, but there were three soldiers who had fought in the Vietnam War. They had just come back from military duty in Vietnam. And they were on the float. So we met them, talked with them. I was so proud of them because they were they they were fighters they were people in command they represented the united states armed forces so very well i was so proud of them and i was so proud that i was marching just with them and i remember the day that we had to take my cousin to seattle international airport SeaTac, and send him off to vietnam and his mom crying, not knowing if she would ever see that son again. 
Vietnam was a dirty war. But all these soldiers that went, they fought bravely. Bravely. So these individuals, these 13 military men and women died in in Afghanistan through a bomb. But they served. They tried to help people. But again, we had a military leader who was dysfunctional. We had no plan of action. We had a president who was making decisions and he did, did not even know what he was list doing and he was not listening to those around him that knew what they were doing. So, for Pelosi not to read these names in Congress is really a slap in the face of the American people. So I encourage every single one of you, if you feel strongly about the deaths of these 13 individuals, write to a member of Congress today and ask that these names be read into the congressional record on the floor of the House. And be proud of these individuals. Know that their families are in our hearts and prayers and they're loved because they gave their only their their child to serve America. Write your congressman, congresswoman, and tell them how you feel. Demand that these names are read into the con congressional record. We have the right to do that. We as Americans, we have the right to put something into the congressional record. If we ask your congressman that you want a certain statement inserted into the congressional record, you have that ability. I hope, my, I hope that my letter works. I truly do. I hope that she has a little bit of heart and submits it and reads it. I've asked that of her as a constituent of her district. So that's my request of you this morning. Go out there and do something for these 13 soldiers. They're in our hearts. They're, in, they're, they're loved by America. So I will get off of that subject for right now because I just felt that I had to do something. When I see a hateful Speaker of the House, I've got to do something. I've got to try something. Oh, we always have to try, right? Always have to try. America has changed, don't you think? We have. Ch this America is not the America that I grew up with. This is an America that is, is totally different and it's going in the wrong direction. There was a poll that came out yesterday that 59% of the American people feel that America is going in the wrong direction. And I think that as we get more into this political hate type situation that comes out of the White House and comes out of Congress, that number is going to get higher because we do not see any positive movement within our nation's capital. And we see it every single day because it's a constant fight. It's a constant battle. And I often wonder, is there anything, if I write my member of Congress, am I going to get any type of response that's an honest response instead of a canned response? I think if I was a member of Congress, I would have an individual that sat down and wrote notes back to people. Not this canned response. I know there's thousands and thousands of them, but bring in some volunteers because they'll do it. But let's just make sure that we are responding to our constituents that are out there. Members of Congress are no longer representing you and me. 
We have taxation without representation, which is, by the way, is what formed this country in the first place. But we're back at it again. We're at a situation where this nation has no representation. Our voice is no longer heard. Instead, their, their dedication is to a political party in, instead of the American people. I've said this so many times, so I'm repeating myself, but I'll say it again and again and again so that we understand exactly where we're at. Now, now let's talk about something else at the moment. We are in September. Can you believe that we're in September already? Now, those of you out there in in business, if you have a small business if, or if you're operating a, a side hustle, I, don't, hey, I hate the word hustle, the side gig, you know what? Right now it's September, okay? October, November, December, and the year is up. I want you at this moment, if you own a business or if you are a leader of a business or a corporation or if you are a manager within your department or whatever type of leadership role that you have, now is the time to sit down and review the first part of this year up through August. And I want you to sit back and look at the results and see what went right, what went wrong. What happened that made the company shift in some sort of way? Go back and review your numbers and look to see exactly where you were at from January through August. Look at it month by month, side by side. Look at the income statement side by side. Look at your balance sheet side by side. Look at them very carefully. See exactly where you went up and down is. What was your revenue like? How did did it go up or did it go down? Did your expenses, did they go up or did they go down? Or did they stay the same? What is your bottom line, your net income? Where are you sitting right now from January through August on your bottom line? What are the results of your efforts for the, for the first part of this year? Then I want you to sit down and say, okay, what can I improve on? Take your notes, make some improvements on where you can do better at. See, in business, we have some controls that we can make things stronger within our companies. And if you're not looking at your financial results and your cash flow and everything else, you're not going to know exactly which direction you're going or how you can improve it. You see, planning is everything. Planning is sitting down in review and then also planning for the next few months to end out this year. You've got four months at the moment to, to, do so, to get some results going. I want you to look at your income. Look at your sources of income. What items are really doing well and which ones are not doing good? Which services are making you money and which are not making you money? What can you do to improve the top line? And then you need to go down through your expenses. What are those items that we can cut that we don't really need? I went through my apps the other day that I had paid for. I had so many apps out there that I wouldn't, I was not using, but yet it was taking up space in my computers. It was taking up space on my cell phones. I said, okay, I don't need all this stuff. And there were some programs out there that I thought I would like, and then I found that I didn't like, but I never got around to shutting them off, which is really dumb on my part because I had money going out every single month that I should not have had, leaving my pocket. There's a whole bunch of different things. How are you using your personnel? How are you using your manpower? Are you using your most expensive people all the time? Or are you using those and spreading the cost out so that you're using your lower end individuals? So uh, there's a whole bunch of things that you can look at. And you need to, to see exactly what marketing campaigns are working for you. And what, what is not working for you. 
I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a chicken in my neighborhood. Every morning he comes down to my house and he crows in front of my house. I have so many, I, I don't even know. And this guy, he's a big old white chicken. He is a monster of a chicken. And then he always travels with a little brown chicken. And they go up and down our streets. And they say hi to everybody. Sometimes they come in into our yard. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they just stand out in front. And I knew my, I, I saw my dog staring at something. They were literally staring at something out um, past my gate. And then I looked out and there was a chicken out there. And the dogs had never seen a chicken before. <laughs> they did not know what that is. But let's get back to business. Okay, so we'll, I've kind of outlined what you really need to do to look at your at your business. And then I want you to sit down and talk with some of your people. Now, we don't really talk anymore, right? Zoom. Turn your Zoom on. <laughs> Call one of your employees. And just have a chat on what is going on or what they feel needs to be improved. If you're not getting the answers from them, they probably should not be within your organization. They're just taking up time and drawing cash out of your paycheck. Remember, hire people of value and, and that are going to bring value to your organization. If you've just got people sitting there not really doing anything, maybe a little bit of entering stuff into the computer or taking phone calls, but they're not contributing to the process of generating revenue for the company, then maybe they should not be there. Remember, we want people of value. And they're going to bring value into the company. So take a look at your staffing. It's a good time to do that. Remember, I remember when I had a whole bunch of companies, I remember that I had some favorite individuals. Because they made me laugh, they they you know they and, and some of them were tremendously good workers. I mean, they literally did a good job. But then there were other people who just kind of moped around and kind of did a good job. But I was stupid enough that I kept those stupid people on my payroll, and I should never have done that. I should have gotten rid of them very quickly, because there are individuals out there that want to do the work. So look at your look at your staffing situation. Are you using the right amount of time? Is it time to look at salary increases? Is it time to set some rules on 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 bringing in uh, business or work into the company? Set some rules on that. Set some guidelines. And then the most important person I want you to look at is yourself. How are you spending your time? How are you communicating to the company so that they know what their responsibilities are? And not only, not only that, what is your responsibility as the leader of that company? That group, that project team leader. What are you doing to make it better for the company? And then you got to set some rules for yourself too. It's not just about everybody else in the company, but you are the leader at the top and it trickles down. And if they don't see you producing, you, the, the rest of them are not going to produce. That's just how it works. Top-down theory. And don't think that you're doing all the work and nobody else is. I had a conversation with an individual the other day and, and she said, listen, I am doing all the work. I said, I don't think so. Tell me what you're doing. And she told me her duties. And they were just duties. It wasn't anything special. And then I said, okay, let's talk about your five leaders that are report, under, report underneath you. What are they doing? And she mentioned what they were doing and what they were working on. And I said, okay, so to me it sounds as though you're doing minimal work and they're doing the majority of the work. How are you involved in what they're doing? Are you meeting with them every every so often to see exactly what's going on? Are you monitoring results? Remember, we're, we are a results-oriented business entity. But you have to look at yourself. Don't just look at the other individuals only. 
Look at yourself and what your responsibilities are. And are you fulfilling the responsibilities? Are you meeting the agenda? And are you helping the other team members? Lead. Lead. I have a um, quote that I put out today. I'm going to read it to you as soon as I get my phone out of my pocket here. But I'm going to read it to you. Because it's from Lou Holtz, and I I always appreciate what he puts into writing. And, or what he says out loud. He gave a great speech one time. And I always remember that, because what he said meant so much. But he said that this, and it's really good to know about leadership. He said, The man who complains about the way the ball bounces is likely to be the one who who dropped it. Lou Holtz. Let's read it again. The man who complains about the way the ball bounces is likely to be the one who dropped it. Look at yourself. Look at what you're doing. Look at how you are leading. Is there anything that you need to improve on? Is there anything within your team that needs improvement? Is there a conflict going on that needs to be resolved? Are you disputing with a client that maybe you shouldn't be disputing with? I really want you to think about those because sometimes conflict and disputes within companies waste a whole bunch of time. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Disputes and conflicts within a company internally Waste a lot of money because no one knows who to talk to. No one knows who to report to. No one knows what they're supposed to say. So productivity goes down. Money gets wasted. And you end up looking like an idiot. Bring someone in to resolve those internal conflicts, disputes, before they cost you a lot of money. Hiring a mediator to come in is less expensive than than the waste of time that is taken up by individuals who don't know what to do because people are in dispute. So, listen, this is the last portion of the year. We're almost there to 2022, if you can believe it. Let's do something that is proactive for our companies. Let's look at them. Let's look at them carefully. Let's just not go with a roll, but let's go and literally think about how we're running our companies. That is it for today. That's my podcast. If you have any questions, send it to mediator at lodge, L-O-D-G-E dash C-O dot com. Again, that's mediator at lodge dash C-O dot com. If you like my blogs and my vlogs and my podcasts, support me by following me at www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash Michael Lodge. They're all there. My blogs, the vlogs. Podcast, everything is there. Jokes, I even tell jokes there every once in a while. But get there and follow me. I really need your help. I greatly appreciate it. I love followers and I love to hear their con- comments and, and suggestions and everything else. So follow me. It's not an order. Don't ever think it's an order. It's just a request. But I'm watching. No, I'm not. Not not really. <laughs> Everybody go out and have a great day. I'll talk with you very soon. Bye bye. This podcast has been produced by Michael Lodge, fully focused on content. <laughs>